Welcome to Canadian Innovators, the show that celebrates innovation, entrepreneurs, and the Canadian spirit. I'm Jocelyn Bamford, and every week we introduce a new entrepreneur or expert on the economy to tell their stories and unpack the challenges of keeping jobs in Canada, as well as discuss potential solutions for job growth and prosperity. My guest today and back for return engagement is Mayor of Niagara Falls, Jim Diodati. Jim Diodati is the Mayor of Niagara Falls, Canada. He's a lifelong entrepreneur, having established, owned, and operated several successful businesses before becoming elected as mayor in 2010. He has used his innovative style of polytainment, as he calls it, to reinvent what it is like to be a mayor. Prior to the last election in 2018, Mayor Jim was diagnosed with Hodgkin's lymphoma and underwent extensive chemotherapy over the course of a year, and then subsequently found himself leading the community through the challenges and critical times of the COVID pandemic. He's pushed for go train services to Niagara Falls, building a new South Niagara hospital, and advocated for putting a university hub in downtown Niagara Falls. Welcome back to the program, Mayor Diodati. Thanks for having me, Jocelyn. Mayor, that is quite a backstory. Tell the viewers what made you want to be mayor. That is a great story. But, you know, I, um, as you mentioned, I worked for myself for a long time, and I'm used to doing things in a business way. And I was a city councillor, so I was part-time, and I was still running my business, starting my family, and I didn't really have any interest in, in the job. Uh, but then, you know, one thing I, I've come to realize that you learn a lot of lessons in business. And one of the big ones is the enemy of great is good because good enough is sometimes where we become comfortable and complacent. And I think that's what happened in Niagara Falls because all day long, that water is gonna flow and millions of people are gonna wanna come here whether we do anything or not. And and I would often at times say, you know, guys, don't hurt your hand, pat yourself on the back, you know, because it's that falls that brings people here. What can we do to take it to the next level? And how can we make things better for the average person who maybe is not directly involved in tourism? So I decided, you know, I came back after university and a lot of my friends didn't. And and I thought, you know, if I'm going to get engaged, I got to make things better for my kids, because if it's better for my kids, means it'll be better for everyone's kids and grandkids. And I made a pledge. I ran on a 10 year business plan, which was uh, odd and unusual because in politics, you do three and four year business plans to get reelected. But I understand in business, there's short, medium and long term goals. And some of them take a long time in success, success of governments. So uh, I did that, ran on that 12 years ago. And as you mentioned, uh, here I am. <laughs> Well, Mayor, you have had a recent great success pushing the Justin Trudeau government to drop their arrive can and other border measures. You were part of, part of a group of MPs and border mayors who signed a joint letter to Justin Trudeau. Can you tell us about that letter? Yes. Uh, in, in Niagara Falls, we're the number one leisure destination in Canada. We get 20 million visits a year. 40,000 people count on tourism to feed their family, to pay the bills. And I can tell you myself, along with a lot of people, took many hands, a lot of other border city mayors and business people, we all came together, both sides of the border. And we tried to explain to them that you're killing the economy. And of course, we couldn't control COVID coming, but we don't need self-inflicted wounds with overarching restrictions that do nothing to keep us safe, but definitely do a lot to kill the economy and hurt business people in business. So we decided to come together, lobby the federal government. We were very frustrated because we'd always, in the beginning, agreed to this because we said, well, follow the science. And, and we all agreed that it'd be the medical science, not the political science. And we wanted to make sure that we followed the right course for everybody. Well, uh, probably earlier in this year or late last year, we realized it was time. There was no longer a benefit. And I spoke with experts in the medical field like Dr. Zane Chagla, infectious disease expert at McMaster University in Hamilton. And we realized there was no more benefit to what we were doing. We needed to stop the insanity. And I'm grateful that finally we've got it stopped. Yeah, hats off to you and all your efforts because it's well long overdue. Now, I, I have to ask you before we go to break, and we only have about 30 seconds left. In your bio, you said you like to follow polytainment. Can you tell us what that's about? <laughs> yeah, because, you know, politics is typically pretty dry and boring. And, and, you know, I come from an entrepreneur and I said it's a mixture of politics and entertainment to make it interesting so people are engaged and they're, they're not apathetic. We got to make it more fun and jazz it up. So I call it polytainment. 